All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to use Synology Drive from a business owner's perspective. This is going to be the most common tasks that a lot of businesses need to do, specifically when it comes to file management and file sharing in between organizations. So I kinda of wanna talk through like the overall setup for it from very much a business-focused orientation. Obviously, this will work for home users. You can gleam anything you need from it, but we're gonna be focusing on business users who essentially have an office file server who need various things for people to do and kind of want a lot of that Google Drive level stuff. Stuff like everybody kind of has their own section of the NAS to work on. You've got your own space. And then if you need to share files with somebody, that is trivially easy. There's also gonna be a section of team folders. That's where everybody can kind of collaborate depending on who needs what and still the ability to share out files from there. And so this is gonna be focused very much on the business side of things. All right, so step one, we're gonna be using Synology NAS right here. This is an old NAS, but in all honesty, gonna to work totally fine for this. And we're going to be using Synology Drive. All right, and so before we start this video, I wanna actually talk about the fact that there are a few key issues with using Synology Drive, specifically from a business perspective. Nothing too crucial, but just things you need to know. First off, indexing. And I will put an asterisk on this is indexing once DSM 7.2 comes out with a new drive version is supposed to be 10 times faster, but indexing takes a very long time. So what indexing is, is any folder that is in a Synology drive team folder, and we'll get to that in a minute here, essentially has to be fully indexed. That means that the NAS has to use its CPU to go through every single file in that entire folder and actually do a few pretty intense tasks that is not easy to do once you're doing hundreds of thousands of files. So one, it's gotta read the entire contents of that file if it's something like a Word document or a PDF, so it can actually put all that data in an index so it can be searchable. So then it's also got to figure out if it needs to make small previews for image files and things like that. And so because of that, indexing can take a very long time, especially if you have a massive file server. If you're just starting out, this shouldn't be too much of an issue, but just have that beware. Another issue that is not really as apparent on the bigger XS models that have those beefy CPUs, but I have found in my experience, when using a Synology Drive shared folder, a team folder, the overall throughput of that system is decreased. So writing to a drive folder takes longer than writing to a non-drive folder on regular models. Now that being said, if you only have a one gigabit connection, you won't notice that. It should be able to do one gigabit line rate. However, if you are going 10 gigabit and you're a video editing house and you're constantly bringing in tons and tons and tons of data, and maybe you've got a 25 gigabit setup, or you're just really loading through it and you need a lot of people to have fast connections, you might notice that there is a slowdown. And so that's just one thing to be aware of. And finally, number of files. Synology Drive starts to do weird things once you're over a few million files, so I would watch out for that. If you have insane number of files, I have seen issues with that. They are working really hard to fix that, but I have seen it in the past. All right, so really quickly, I wanted to just tack on a quick, like number four that's kind of is and kind of isn't an issue, but just something to ask yourself. So if your goal for your NAS is to have your standard Office file server, that's it. You want your standard Office file server how it's been the past 20 years, where essentially there's a single drive on the network, maybe two if you've got different departments who need different things, and essentially everybody has access to it, except maybe there's an HR folder in there that only certain people have access to. Pretty basic stuff, and everybody's always in the office, and that's how you work, and you don't really share files externally. You might not need this. This might be unnecessary complexity for your office. And so in that case, just sticking with the standard file server, if it's been working for you and you don't really have anything you need extra, do it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do this unless there's something you're looking to fix. I just wanted to get that out of the way because there are some cases where it's unnecessary complexity and you don't need to be going down these routes if you're not going to get value added. All right, and so now let's go ahead and install Drive and we're just gonna kind of talk through how it all works. So we're just gonna go in the package center. And I've already got installed here, but you can just click install right there. So now we're gonna go ahead and just open up and I'm gonna bring in here. And you're going to notice that there are three different apps that are created. I'm actually just gonna drag all three of them into the side panel here just so we can see them really easily. 
First off, there is Synology Drive Admin Console, Synology Drive, and Synology Drive ShareSync. These are all very distinct things that are used in specific use cases. So Synology Drive Admin Console is going to be where you're actually configuring Synology Drive. Administrators are the only people who will have access to this. Then your users will be clicking on Synology Drive. That is kind of the essential Google Drive, and that's how people will interface with your, the NAS remotely when they're not on the local network. And finally, there's Synology Drive Share Sync, which is gonna be outside the scope of this video, but what allows you to sync the entire file server with another Synology NAS. And so a change in one is reflected to the other. Really useful feature, but outside the scope of this video. So we're going to first start by going into the Synology Drive Admin Console, and we're going to see that you've got some pretty good information here when it's all set up. You can see who's syncing, who's got it hooked up, you can see what is going on, who's online, and a great log of everything. There's a ton of good information in here. Now where we're actually gonna set stuff up is team folder. So right here, I've already got this set up, so I'm just gonna disable it. But by default, you will see that there's this My Drive folder, and it is enabled by default when you click yes. If this is not enabled, you can hit enable right there, and it'll do it. So what this is, is my drive is a home folder. So you'll see that once you've enabled drive and you've enabled my drive, you're gonna see this two folders populate right here, home and homes. This is by far the question that I ask most when I'm consulting is what is this homes folder and what is this home folder? So it's a concept in Linux that every single user has their own home folder. It's a place where they have full access to, and that is kind of where their stuff lives. Then as a Linux administrator, you're able to see everybody's home folder, which is called the homes folder. So right now I'm signed in with the account will admin. So that means that will admin right here and home, they're the exact same folder. They literally are the exact same folder. It's not a copy of each other. They are pointing to the exact same place on disk. So if I make a modification here, we will see it immediately reflected here because they're the exact same folder. Essentially what this allows you to do is look into every single one of your users folders. And so that way, if you need to grab something out of there, you have full control over everything that's in their home folder. So now we've got this my drive folder launched. So let's go ahead and just click on Synology drive and see what happens. So right here, it's going to talk about office. I'm going to go into that in another video but we can see there's this my drive folder and there's this team folder. This is what your users will be seeing. And so now with the new version of DSM, the entire home folder is your my drive folder. That is the new default for everybody. And so you can see essentially my drive right here is the same as my home folder. You can see they're absolutely identical and it's just a more Google-esque version of this. But then we can see some stuff on the left-hand side here. And so we started with my drive and that is by far the most simple concept to understand. My drive is your home folder. Think of it like your Google drive folder that everybody's got. It is their own section. They can do whatever they want in there and you as the admin can see it. And they're also able to share stuff. Now we're going to jump into the team folder. And this is kind of merging that concept of the office file server where everybody's got access to a shared drive and the Google Drive paradigm. It's merging those two together. And so let's go ahead and enable a team folder on Synology Drive, because you can see right here, we do not have any enabled. So we need to go into the admin console and enable one. So you can see right here, I've just created this shared folder called business. And so we are now going to go into team folder and enable it. And so what this is going to do is this is going to make this team folder, this business fo shared folder that has been accessible on the SMB network on everybody's local computers, now in this Synology drive for everybody who's got access to it. So we're just gonna hit enable. You've got versions here. Note, if you have tons and tons and tons of files, I would not recommend enabling versions. If you have a small number of files, that's fine. But I have noticed that when you've got over like 100,000 files, this versioning can actually take up a lot of space. And so instead, what I would recommend is enabling snapshots. But that's for another time. We're just going to not have versions enabled here. And so here, it's pretty simple. 
It says if they've got read-only permission in DSM, basically in control panel, as they've already had on the file server, they'll have read-only permission here. And if they've got read-write, they'll be able to modify stuff from here. So now we can go back into Synology Drive, the client. This is what your users will be seeing and just refresh the page. And we can see that under team folder now, I've got the business folder. And so here I can do all the collaboration that I need to remotely. I am able to also sync this with my local computer. So I can sync specific files that I need to with my local computer. And so I've got a lot of access here and it's just a very Google Drive way to work. It is primarily what you're gonna be wanting to do for basic use cases for people who are working remotely and just sometimes need to be able to grab a file off the NAS in the same way that they would just download a file from Google Drive. If that's the workflow, the team folder is a great place to be because it makes it really easy to share stuff. Okay, and so those are the two big concepts that I wanted to go over. Everybody's gonna have this My Drive folder and they're also going to have access to any team folders that you have enabled. And so now we can get into the sharing stuff and that's where it gets interesting. So really quickly, I'm just gonna pop over to DSM and create a new account. And so this is going to be random user. We'll just call them person. We are not going to give them any access to the business folder, but they will have their own home folder. And by default, they should have access to Synology Drive unless you've changed it somewhere else. And so now we've got this person in here. So now I'm just going to create a new window over here, a new Safari window that is private. And I'm going to sign in with that person account. And so one thing you can actually do is create a special link where they never even have to go here. They always just go to drive, but that's for another day. So we're going to be just opening up their Synology drive page. So right here, we are logged in on this window without the extra tabs. This window right here, is the person user. This is person, random user. And so this is kind of seeing it from their end. And then when I go over to this desktop, you can see it from the admin's perspective who has access to all the shared folders. So we can see over here on the right, when we go into team folder, we do not have any permission to any team folders. Therefore, we don't see anything here. But we do still have access to my drive. And so we can just create files however we'd like to. So we can test all this stuff really easily. We can add stuff however we need to, and this is our own space. And you can see right here, they can download a client to automatically sync specific files to their computer. And on Windows and soon to be on Mac OS, they can also do what's called a smart sync, where it only syncs files on demand. And so that means that if you've got access to a terabyte of files, it's not going to download all those files until you actually double click on them. So now we can see right now we've got the basic Google Drive setup. He's got his stuff, I've got my stuff. They don't really talk. Now let's talk about sharing and this is the really crucial part. So say under my admin account right here, so we're back on the account that has access to the team folder. Say person, I should have named him a better name, needs access to this folder right here. Well, we can give it to him. This is a team folder. So this is a folder that most people are accessing locally in the office on the SMB network, but maybe he is a contractor who just really needs access to this right here. So we can just right click on it and hit share. And there's two different options here. You can either have it be a public or a private link. And so what you can do right here is you can call it private and say only invitees can access. And then we're just gonna say person. So now you've got a few options here. You can either have them a previewer where they are actually just able to see what files are in there I guess it's useful for some workflows. A viewer, which is read-only access. Editor, where they're actually able to do some modifications to it, but not anything too much. And then finally, a manager who actually has full control. They can delete files, they can do all those things, and they can also share it. So they can say who can share it. So we're gonna say that they are an editor. So we're gonna just hit save here. We are going to share this folder which they do not have permission to anywhere else with them. And so now we can see right here, we have this little link right here, that this little icon that says person when we hover over it. This means that, that directory is shared with them, the specific folder and everything within it. So now we can also tell when we hit shared with others, 
you can see exactly what has happened and who owns it and it, how it was sent out. Now if we go into the admin tab over here. I'll also show you because it's really useful. We can pull up the admin console again. Sorry, it's logging me in there again. And we can see under log settings, hey, boom, tells us exactly what happened there. And you've got a lot of information here with who has been shared by what. So there's a lot of great information here that allows you to see who's sharing what with what people. And this log is just super, super, super useful. And you can also filter it by specific shared folders as well. There's a lot more in here, but we're gonna keep it pretty simple. So now let's go in and see what that external user has. So we can now just go ahead and open up our shared with me and boom, now we're able to see this folder and only this folder. So now we are able to collaborate with this. We are able to collaborate with them on this one shared folder without having to set up any complex permissions. It is incredibly easy to do this and it's just really easy for sharing files, especially when not everybody's in the office. This just makes a lot of this stuff that was very complicated a lot easier now. So you can either share out of your team folder or out of your own personal space and that just makes it into that really great Google Drive-esque thing where you don't have to worry about paying crazy amounts of money for Google Cloud and you also have very fast local speeds to it if you don't have great internet connections. And so that is such a great use case for this. You can see it's so easy to share stuff and later on if you need to remove it, you can go ahead and just right click on it and under share, just X out of them. And now we refresh the page, boom. We do not have access to this folder anymore because it was removed out. It's a great use case for remote users who just need access to a couple of files every once in a while and you can have all of your subcontractors have this and it gives them a common place to upload files. It's really great for all these kinds of setups and things like that. It just makes it so easy to manage all these different things. There is a lot more here, but this is really the base concept that I think everybody really wants out of it is to kind of merge in this online everywhere setup. I've got videos on how to actually use the Synology Drive client to actually allow you to sync locally, and I will be doing a lot more videos on that in the future. All right, well, that's going to be a good stopping place for this video. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to see what other people have questions on, specifically regarding the business use case of Synology Drive, and I really hope this was helpful. So go ahead and leave any other tutorials or any other things you kind of didn't understand about Synology Drive in the comments below. I'll do my best to respond to them. All right, have a good one. Bye.